past twelve. And down came Stephen, and we were in the college gateway in the lodge. Ah, oh, Hawking, I said, how many have you managed to do then? Well, he said, I I've only had time to do the first ten. And I think at that point we realised that it's not just that we weren't in the same street, uh, we weren't on the same planet. I once calculated that I did about 1,000 hours work in the three years I was at Oxford, an average of an hour a day. I'm not proud of this lack of work, I'm just describing my attitude at the time. An attitude that nothing was worth making an effort for. He used to produce his work every week for tutorial, and as he never kept any notes or papers or that sort of thing, on leaving my room he would normally throw it in my waste paper basket. And when he was with other undergraduates at the tutorial and they saw this happen, they were absolutely horrified because they thought he did this work in probably half an hour. If they could have done it in a year, they wouldn't have thrown it in the waste paper basket, they would have put it in a frame up on their walls. Because of my lack of work, I had planned to get through the final exam by doing problems in theoretical physics and avoiding any questions that required factual knowledge. I didn't do very well. I was on the borderline between a first and second class degree, and I had to be interviewed to determine which I should get. They asked me about my future plans. I replied, if they gave me a first, I would go to Cambridge. If I only got a second, I would stay in Oxford. They gave me a first. I drove Stephen and his young brother out to Woburn Park and he climbed a tree. He was testing himself out, I think, I didn't realize. And he did manage to climb a tree and to go along a branch of it and to get himself down. I think he began to notice that his hands were less useful than they had been but he didn't tell us. UNIV has these square staircases, which are round, but they're square. It was just coming down from one of the rooms. Steve actually fell on the stairs, coming down stairs and kind of bounced all the way down to the bottom. I don't know if he lost consciousness, but he, he lost his memory. We took him to either my room or someone's room. The first question, of course, was, who am I? And uh, we told him, you're Steve Hawking. And uh, a minute later, or right away, he would ask again, who am I? Uh, Steve Hawking. And then after a couple of minutes, he, he remembered that he was Steve Hawking. And we'd say, well, do you remember going down to the bar and having a drink on Sunday night? Or do you remember rowing, coxing on the river that on Monday? And his memory came back gradually until he could remember the previous day's events and then the previous hour and then by the end of the two hours he could remember everything the question was well maybe uh, you know you've lost some of your mind because of this and so steve decided well i'll take the mensa test we said of course you'll get into mensa and, but he came back delighted that he was able to get into mensa absolutely delighted <laughs> I felt that there were two areas of theoretical physics I might study at Cambridge. One was cosmology, the study of the very large. The other was elementary particles, the study of the very small. However, I thought that elementary particles were less attractive because there was no proper theory. All they could do was arrange the particles in families, like in botany. In cosmology, on the other hand, there was a well-defined theory, Einstein's general theory of relativity. I 
It was a very cold year. And the ice on Verulamium Pond was, it was frozen there. And we all went skating. And Stephen managed to skate fairly well. But then he and I were, were close together. He wasn't skating in a very advanced way, but nor was I as it comes to that. Um, he fell and he couldn't get up. So I took him to a cafe to warm up and he told me then all about it. And it was diagnosed. I insisted on going to see the, his doctor because it seemed to me, however long you're going to live, there's probably something someone can do about it, at least anyhow, to make things easier for people. And I won't mention the doctor's name, but I, I got to see him at the London Clinic. And he was rather surprised that I should bother to come round to see him. I mean, after all, I was only Stephen's mother. Um, so he said he was quite nice. I mean, he agreed to see me in a rather grand way. And he said, yes, it's all very sad. I mean, brilliant young man, cut off in the prime of his youth, as it were. But of course, but I said, well, what can we do? Is he, well, what can we do to sort of, uh, can we give him, can we get physiotherapy? Can we get anything like that that will help in any way? I said, well, actually, no, there's nothing to do with it, more or less. And that's it. Shortly after my 21st birthday, I went into hospital for tests. They took a muscle sample from my arm, stuck electrodes into me, and injected some radio-opaque fluid into my spine, and watched it going up and down with x-rays, as they tilted the bed. I was diagnosed as having ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or motor neuron disease, as it is also known. The doctors could offer no cure, and gave me two and a half years to live. I went into the graduates' common room and uh, looking really for someone to have lunch with. And uh, there was nobody around that I particularly wished to have lunch with. And then, lo and behold, Stephen walked through the door. I don't know what he was doing in Oxford either. I've certainly forgotten now. And so... Uh, Stephen generously went off to buy the drinks and brought them over and put them down on the table. And as he put his pint of beer down, um, he spilt it. And I sort of said genially, you know, oh, heavens, you know, drinking at this time of day. And he then told me that he'd been in Addenbrooke's for three weeks and they'd done a whole series of tests and they'd decided uh, what was wrong with him. And he told me very straight and flat that he was gradually going to lose the use of, of his body.